Now, I have three exercises for the trainees to do here. Here, again, you don't need to do this, although it will be useful for testing comprehension. Now, these are this, these are our topics next session. Now, on to our coding part. All right. So, welcome to Colab, to Google Colab. Now. Our first thing to do for Bayesian linear regression is to install these three packages. This RVIS package is used for plotting. It's more convenient than the package we used last time, which was PyPlot. Although there's a bit of an error with how the latest version of RVIS works. So instead we have, we have to download and install these versions of RVIS, PYMC3, and Tayano. So kindly install these versions. And if successful, you should have this message appear. If unsuccessful, um, uh, please check spelling and spacing. Now, first we upload our data set. So to upload a data set, what we do is we import from, from the Google Colab package the files module. Then we use the files.upload function to upload a CSV file, which we set as the uploaded variable. So simply run this like so. And once it's run, simply choose the file. Uh, okay, I, I won't do that today because we have already performed the analysis beforehand, although it should be very easy. Now our file is oecdgrowth.csv, which um, tracks GDP growth for OECD countries in 1985 and um, five other variables. GDP growth in 1960, investment, um, percentage of working population in secondary school, research and development as a proportion of GDP, and population growth rate. So this, what this command does is <clears throat> it sets our variable uploaded into a new variable called DF which stands for data frame. Although we need to pass it through pandas first through its read CSV function. Oh, by the way, we need to import uh, these packages too. UI, um, NumPy, pandas, and most especially IO, which we need over here to upload our data set. Now stats models here is used for our first linear regression, OLS. Now I imported Matt, I imported PyPlot here, although I don't think we, we really need it today. So here we printed our data frame as so. Now over here, we performed our initial OLS estimates, which we printed here below. So to, to perform this, we use the, the line of code stats models that formula that OLS we set our formula like so, and we set our data as DF. And we also tell Python to, to have it fit. And we also print our summary of the estimate. Now, we over here, we parse some of the regression data. So for example, um, co-Fs co is equal to um, est underscore mult underscore all this params. This means we're getting the parameters. So here, intercept school RANDD. Next, we get our residual degrees of freedom, which is 19. And finally, we have our variance covariance matrix over here. Additionally, we have a mean squared error like so. Oh, by the way, when we're printing here our values what i did was to to pass 
the, va the numerical values in the string format through the format function, like so. Now, next, we finally perform our Bayesian inference. So over here, what I did was um, <clears throat> I set a dictionary for, for um, our prior densities. A dictionary is a pair of two values. In this case, it's a string, then a distribution from the PYMC3 package. So here, I set our mean to be the coefficients, our variance to be the variance covariance matrix, and shape as in number of variables. In this case, it's just the um, length of coefficients, which is just three, because we have three coefficients, intercept, school, and our research and development. Now, our variance here is the formula we, it, um, it uses as alpha and beta, the formulas we stated earlier, where alpha is, um, <clears throat> alpha is residual degrees of freedom divided by two, and beta is equal to the mean squared error divided by two. You can find this in the slides later on. Now, just like before, last week, we perform our Bayesian inference. So this time, we're using a GLM form for the Bayesian inference. We have our formula, our data, and our prior distributions over here. We use the Metropolis algorithm again. And this time, you can note that our plotting code is simpler and we can do that because we're using the RVIS package, unlike last time where we used PLT, which is very complicated to say the least. <clears throat> so here, burn trick. So we're throwing away our first five thousand burn, our first five thousand samples, and we plot our posterior. So as you see here, we get new. <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> as you can see here we get new estimates for our coefficients. Our intercept becomes 16,962 and our school becomes 81, our R&D becomes 14. And we also have a new standard deviation estimate compared to our first OLS estimate. Oh, and wait. Um, wait, my Paul, oh, there, wait, my computer hang a bit, hang on. All right, there we go, all right. Also note that, that this interval over here represents the credibility interval, which means there is a 94% chance that the, the real value or the value which, which maximizes the posterior distribution the most is located in between the, these two endpoints. Now, over here, we perform a hierarchical linear regression. We use what we call weakly informative priors. Now, why weakly informative? Well, as we see over here, our hyper priors have vaguely set parameters. So in, the, in mu A, for example, we just set mu equals zero and sigma equals one. And for sigma A, mu equals one and sigma equals one. The same for alpha and beta. So it works kind of like last time, although instead of using our OLS estimates, we instead use these weakly informative hyper priors. So mu equals mu underscore A, sigma equals sigma underscore A, so on and so forth. Note that you can also use weakly informative priors straight for linear regression, like instead of these conjugate priors, we can just set mu equals zero, sigma equals one, alpha equals zero, beta equals one, like what we did here. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So performing the Bayesian inference, it's just like last time, we set the formula, the algorithm, and so on and so forth, obtaining these new estimates. Note also that we added a term for each continent. 
Here, it's Europe and Amer North America compared to Asia, Pacific. So our intercept now becomes 17,419 compared to last time, which was 16,962. And we have two new intercepts. I'm oh, sorry, we have two new terms. So here we find that in Europe, um, we, the continental difference for Europe is 715 lower than Asia, while North America is higher by 512. And we also have new terms for school and R&D. Here we find that somehow our school in coefficient dropped to negative 39, while R&D is at 15, <clears throat> which is quite similar to our last one. So what? So one possible economic inter interpretation is that um, th the positive coefficient for the school variable here means that schooling in the different continents really is different. And that's the main drive behind um, the continental differences. Now, we also have our standard deviation term over here. Sorry, I mean our standard deviation estimate, not term. So it's quite lower. It's lower from our original Bayesian inference. And that was it for